Hi, everyone. My name is Hazel Pina. I'm one of the alumni coordinators at Inwood Academy for Leadership High School. Um, and welcome to our business um, panel today. Um, this is uh, for the purpose of you guys to learn what everybody does here and what types of different careers you can go into business. My name is Alyssa Weaver. I'm also one of the Inwood Academy alumni coordinators and we're gonna let our panelists introduce themselves. Hi everyone, um, I'm Billy Moran. I'm an accounting manager at PwC. So I went to Lehigh University and I double majored in computer science and accounting. And I started working at PwC after I graduated in 2014. And I passed my CPA exams in 2016. So that's a certified public accountant, which just means that I'm registered to do accounting um, in the United States and I'm licensed. So that's my background. Hi, I'm Joseph Cruz. Um, I am a vice president and wealth management advisor at Merrill Lynch. Um, I am about 10 years into my career at Merrill. Um, I graduated college in 2007. I went to Manhattan College where I majored in finance and computer information systems. Um, wasn't sure what route I wanted to go, so decided to go into the uh, financial world. Um, and yeah, and now, however many years later, I'm, I'm here. Um, I am a um, certified financial planner. So um, similar to Billy, I uh, took an exam to take my career to the next level. Um, and um, yeah, happy to be here. Hi folks, my name is Pamela Rosario Perez. Um, I went to Harvard University for social and cognitive neuroscience and got my secondary in Romance Languages and Culture. Um, growing up, I always heard that a mí me gustaba el bochinche, mainly that I used to like to gossip a lot with my friends. So basically, I just went for a career that allowed me to really get into the minds of people and do that in multiple languages, as you can see from my undergrad experience. Um, today, I actually work as a program manager of customer experience and strategy at a cybersecurity company called Rapid7. Um, and super excited to be here and also share more about how people with non-technical backgrounds can definitely have a career and a beautiful future in tech. Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Mejia. Uh, I have to first say I love IEL, have been part of the family for a long, long time. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here. I'm currently an account manager at Microsoft and this is actually my first week. So it's super, super exciting. Um, I graduated from Berkeley College in 2017 and also got my uh, MBA, uh, Master's in Business Administration in 2019. Uh, previously, I was working at a staffing agency, uh, which did recruiting for food and beverage companies. And I'm now going into five years um, into my, my professional career. So again, glad to be here and excited to, to answer the questions um, that are in the panel. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Prusi. Uh, I went to the University of Alabama for my undergrad. Um, I was a finance major and then I specialized in professional sales. Um, right now, I'm working for MetLife as an account executive. Um, so what that is, is I'm basically in a sales role and I help with all types of group coverages. Um, so we don't sell anything on an individual basis, but we'll help uh, on the group side, so offering benefits to companies, um, everything but the medical. So it'd be things like dental, vision, life and disability. Um, and then I'm currently getting my MBA at night at Virginia Tech. Um, looking forward to connecting with everyone. All right, thank you guys so much. Um, so our first question of our panel is, so this question is coming off of like, people go into business or tech because there's money. Um, I'm gonna become a business person because I know that if I get good enough, I can get the money that I want. Um, so the question is, is business solely about wealth and self enrichment? And we're gonna follow the same pattern that you guys just did. So the, I would say the answer is no. And one thing that would reflect that answer for me is my company's mission statement. So a mission statement is the, the values, like what purpose is your company serving in the world? 
So PwC's mission statement is our purpose is to build trust in society and to solve important problems. So that's a statement that you can get behind and say, okay, I know what I can do each day to achieve that goal long-term. And yes, there will be financial benefits, but that's not the driving factor of the company and of my role. So I would say um, that business is not solely about wealth and enrichment and companies that are only about that won't succeed because they don't have the values to drive a long-term successful business. Yeah, I would build on what, what Billy said. So um, I invest money for wealthy individuals and families. And um, I can tell that a lot of people that have accumulated a ton of wealth aren't the happiest people. Um, and so some of those life decisions that they've made um, in terms of happiness probably haven't panned out, even though their economic backgrounds um, certainly would suggest that maybe they have. Um, and what Billy mentioned about how companies um, are not about making profit primarily anymore. It's really about making an impact in the communities they serve. Um, that's absolutely a big part of what uh, I look for in companies I invest in for clients. So um, a lot of clients now want to know the impact um, from a social perspective of the companies that they're investing in. Um, and so a lot of what we do focuses on social impact investing um, and environment and social governance uh, topics as well. So while um, a career in business can certainly, and particularly in finance, can certainly be financially um, lucrative, it's certainly not the driving force of why I get up every day. It's not what makes me happiest about my job. Um, and yeah, it's certainly something that's becoming less and less important for um, businesses and for people looking for, for jobs in the workplace, I think. Yeah, I absolutely agree with what Billy and Joseph said. Won't add to it because I think that they put it beautifully. Um, to tackle that question from a different angle, um, I did want to share a little bit more about like my background and why I ended up in tech. So I came from the Dominican Republic when I was seven years old, um, and I'm the oldest of 12. So throughout the years, my family and I, we struggled a lot. Money was very scarce. And you know, I remember there was a lot of days where whatever food we got um, on a reduced lunch voucher at school was the only meal that we had. So I knew for me growing up that I really wanted to try out to find a career. And if I could find a career that could give me a lot of money, that's what I was going to go for. <laughs> um, and coming out of college, I didn't know exactly what that looked like. So, you know, I did a thin political strategy. It was great, but didn't really have the money to support myself and my family. I went into finance you know, was a bit of a mismatch with the values, but it was a great company. And then I ended up in tech because it actually provided me with work-life balance and a place where I could really like see myself grow and, and see myself as who I am, not someone who's trying to mask themselves as, you know, passing for this or that, or having to wear my hair straight or having to speak in a certain way, whatever the case may be. It's a place I really appreciated who I was and allowed me to grow, you know, into having a career and learning more about how to be a business professional, not necessarily like Billy and Joseph have already said, really seeking profit, but really making sure that what we are bringing to the table in terms of our services and our products are really meeting our customers' needs, no matter who our customers are. So I absolutely agree with what's already been said. A lot of companies nowadays are not necessarily looking at just the money. You know, let's just get you know really hungry and, and not do right by our customers. Let's just focus on the money. Um, but I also wanted to answer the piece of you know me going into business. I did want to find a good balance where I could make money, but also be myself and bring my true self to the table in every space that I inhabit. I'm not sure where Jeff went, but Brian, you can go. Okay. Um, I would say I, I'm in agreement with everyone here. Um, I don't think that wealth and money is necessarily the driver for why people uh, jump into business. I think there's a lot of things um, on top of that. It shouldn't be a driver, maybe more of an afterthought and what comes afterwards. Um, I think for me, coming from MetLife and working in insurance, it's really beneficial for me, I think, just to be able to see how we're impacting others. Um, if someone has a life insurance policy and if God forbid they lost a loved one, to be able to pay uh, their family if maybe that person was the sole income driver for the family. So being able to offer them a life insurance benefit that afterwards, the people that are the family that's still there, they can still have um, money to help them. 
Um, and then even with like a disability benefit, if um, someone all of a sudden had maybe like a stroke or something and they were confined to a wheelchair, they can't work their day-to-day -day job. I think there's a lot of value for our side when we can see that we're actually helping someone. And sometimes you don't get to hear all of the stories, but I think it helps a lot when we can actually, when they do come back and say, hey, this was really important. We're getting um, this amount of money every uh, month for the rest of our lives. Uh, and that just, it means a lot to our side to be able to actually hear it and bring it all back to uh, the center. Just to follow up on that, um... I'd love for each of you to share, like for our, our high school seniors who are gonna be watching this and maybe they're thinking business, but we have a variety of careers under that business umbrella. I'd love to hear just a little bit more about your specific um, career and maybe how you got there and what it looks like in the day-to-day. -day. Yeah, so on um, my specific career, so I'm an audit manager. So what that is, is I essentially go to companies, MetLife, for example, and I would review their um, uh, balance sheet income statement, basically what they report out to the world. So think when you go to buy a stock of Google or, or MetLife or something, that stock price is based on the fact that they've made, you know, this much money and they have, you know, these long-term liabilities, et cetera. So my job is to come in and say, are those numbers correct? So again, going back to the mission statement, what I'm here to do is to build trust in society that we can rely on this information that these companies are being fairly stated. So how I got here, so like I said, I went to Lehigh for computer science uh, and also accounting. So I wasn't really sure where I wanted to um, land within PwC because there are a few different um, branches of PwC, but I started an audit and I like that route because I got to um, explore day to day, like building things, you know, figuring out how to solve problems. And I enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed learning on the fly um, and then going to different companies and seeing different things. So now my day to day uh, as a manager involves a lot of um, reviewing work and, and handling a, a, a big team, but then also getting tasked with the bigger questions and making sure that I can provide answers. And it really just comes back to making sure that anything that the company is, is saying or doing is reasonable and can be supported. Um, so I manage the financial assets of wealthy individuals and families. Um, and I try to become the, point, the financial point of contact for really anything for our clients. Um, so our clients have done a great job of becoming successful in their various fields, um, whether they're the CEO of a publicly traded company, which we have a few of, uh, professional athletes, which we also work with, um, or just regular folks with regular jobs that have done a great job of saving um, and, and budgeting for years. Um, and a big part is helping them transition from the work life and um, you know, the, the life that they built for themselves for the last 20 or 30 years. Um, and getting into retirement. And um, while these people are very intelligent financial professionals in some cases, um, they don't necessarily have the specific expertise to manage personal assets and get them to, um, to retirement and then through a successful retirement. Um, so that's where I build a lot of financial plans for clients. Um, so we model out their, their future using a number of different inputs. So there is a lot of math in my job. Um, I'm, I rely on technology a lot. So there's a good technology component as well. Uh, but I think the biggest part is the interpersonal connections you build with people um, and listening. So I, I find that I'm a pretty good empathetic listener. Um, and a lot of what I, I do at the end of the day is ends up tying into to, um, a client's psychology. So I've talked to clients for a couple hours before. And at the end of the call, they're saying, wow, this is more like I sat down with my therapist and not like I'm talking to my advisor. Um, and those are the most rewarding uh, experiences I, I have personally. Um, I think taking a step back, I think part of the question was um, how long did it take to get here? Where did I come from? Um, so I grew up in the city, went to LaSalle Academy and all boys high school um, on the Lower East Side. Um, came from a middle class background. Both of my parents were civil servants. Um, my dad worked in sanitation, my mom for the police department. And um, I went to Manhattan College up in the Bronx and graduated there in four years with a degree from, uh, in a, from business school um, in finance and computer information systems. Um, got a job doing actually similar to Billy audit work. Um, it was for the New York Stock Exchange itself, auditing their firms, um, their member firms 
sales practices. Um, I hated it. It was one of the worst decisions I ever made. But a year later, I was able to correct that and do something that I thought I, I would enjoy more, which was actually going back to a place that I interned when I was in college, which was at Merrill Lynch. Uh, the timing was terrible. It was right into the teeth of the financial crisis, but I didn't know that at the time. Um, so I took that job in 2008 and then lost it in 2009. Uh, fortunately, I kept a positive attitude around things and had a supporting family and, and uh, network where I was able to get back into Merrill Lynch in a different role um, in 2011 and build a career from there. So um, now I say 2011 sounds crazy because that's 10 years ago, um, but I've had a really great run and I really um, every day enjoy, I would say going to work, but now going from my bedroom to work, which is, you know, a hallway away. Well, I'm really enjoying listening to everyone's path. This is like so helpful, even for me um, to hear. So yeah, so um, for me, being in customer experience, being a, a CXP, as some people call it, or CCXP certified CX practitioner, there's no one path, I would say, which is something that I love. Um, I'm a natural problem solver and I'm very curious. And what it means by me being a natural problem solver does not mean that I always have the solution, but I love figuring things out, right? Like I like puzzles. I like uh, investigating things. I like to dig in deeper and find out the root cause of a particular issue. And I think it is those qualities more than any certification or degree that will really make you an incredible asset to an organization in, the, in, in my capacity, right? As someone who works in, who manages and owns customer experience strategy. Um, my day-to-day -day is very different um, so that's another thing. Definitely when looking into careers, I wanted something that could really match like just my personality, but also the pace of life. And I love that on one day I can focus on engaging with different people across the business to understand, hey, why is our support system set up this way? When there is an issue, why do people have to call in instead of us send, an, send them an email? Why can't they just go on Instagram and tell us what's going on, right? Like really trying to understand our different business processes. And I also love that another day I can actually take a flight to a customer site and be like, hey, I want to understand your day to day. I want to understand why it's so difficult for you to log into our products. Why has it, why did it take you six months to, you know, post purchase for you to start using our tools um, and really also dig deeper into that customer's lifestyle, that customer's just what they use, what is their tech stack, sometimes we like to say, the series of vendors that they're using, the technologies that they're using, and try to figure out how can we make their experience superior and, and memorable and make sure that they see us as trusted advisors, not simply another cybersecurity vendor. So I do appreciate that my day-to-day -day is very different and I get to really shape what that looks like. But more than anything, um, me being a people person, I appreciate that I get to interact with my colleagues, you know, not only here in the United States, but also those in Colombia and in Hong Kong and Singapore and different areas, and also work with them to help bring about really creative solutions for our customers. So at the end of the day, um, I wouldn't say that for someone to be in my role, they absolutely need to have a specific degree or a specific certification, but it's really those, you know, soft skills of, being interested in, in engaging with different people of different backgrounds and not being scared of big problems and actually being pumped about using whatever tools you have to, you know, think about creative solutions for customers and things that work not only for customers, but for the business as well, so that you're creating a win-win situation. I can, I can go next. I apologize for earlier. I was having some Wi-Fi issues, work from home life. Um, to the first answer, to the first question though, my answer would be no, um, very similar to what everybody else on the panel said. Um, for me, it's all about, you know, leveraging my expertise to help businesses and also individuals uh, as well, achieve their goals. Um, right. So it's not the, the financial benefits are there transparently, but it's not, that's not what it's all about. Um, two, what I currently do now is an account manager at Microsoft. I'm part of a, a, a company that they just, they just acquired. It's called Promote IQ. And what it is, it's a retail media company. And for context, what's happening now with COVID still being very relevant, a lot of consumers are purchasing their groceries and products online. So a lot of food and beverage companies are shifting their spend to online advertising. Think of Amazon.com. 
and any other big retailer that your parents or, or yourselves um, may be using to purchase products. And, and what I do is help these companies um, let, manage their advertising um, spend in order for them to reach the consumers that, that they need to get to. And in that way, right, help, help the consumer. Um, and how did I get here? Um, very similar to Pamela, I came here when I was 10 from the Dominican Republic, grew up in Washington Heights. I went to MS322, grew up going to IEL, NBCY, that's how I know Hazel, Al Alyssa, Jason Marchena, um, very familiar with that community. And then I went to Mahan Center for Science and Math in Harlem. And then I went on to Berkeley College where I did my undergrad. I also played basketball there. I was a four, four year student athlete. And then I decided to get my master's degree, um, started working at Force Brands, which I actually started as an intern, um, which is something that you guys will learn about as you get older internships. And through that internship, I was able to get a job at Force Brands. And after four years you know, of doing digital advertising there, I was now able to get this job at, at Microsoft. You know, And I would say my advice would be to just work hard and, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. You know, talk to people and, and be a sponge and learn as much as you can. And that's where I am now. Yeah, I would say just to follow up on what Jeff was saying, it might not be as important per se on what major you go for, but maybe more of just being a hard worker and showing that for the people uh, that you're in, interviewing for and then also um, who, you, who you end up working for. Um, so I was a finance major. I specialized in sales. So I knew I wanted to go that route. My first internship was actually at an engineering company. So it was way off from where I was even thinking about going. Um, then I was at a bank for a different internship, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And I think that started creating more stress of like, all right, I just did this for experience. I did that for experience. And because of that, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting until senior year crept up and then I was probably halfway through it. So I really got to figure out what I'm going to do once I graduate. Um, so what I ended up doing is I, I tried to use campus resources and different networking events to just figure out what all was out there. Um, I think that'll be huge for you guys. Maybe starting uh, sophomore and junior year, you'll want to start looking at some of those things. Um, but I think just trying to get out there and asking the right questions um, maybe less of just pitching why you are important to whatever they're trying to take, but just asking questions, figure out, all right, where could I fit into the puzzle piece that they're trying to collect? Um, so I ended up, when I found MetLife, I realized that there was a, it was a one-year training program, which stuck out to me of just being able to pretty much get back in school in a way, because you go through a year of just learning the different benefits and everything. Um, so it took me all in all about a year and a half to get to the account executive role that I'm currently in. Um, but again, there's you, everyone came from different backgrounds. I know people were poli sci, finance, risk management, um, maybe more on the business side, but you can really come forever from wherever. I think it, like Jeff was saying, you just got to be a hard worker. Thank you so much. Um, so our next question is going to be, um, basically from what we hear about business is like a lot of people are trying to get into business. Um, so is there a lot of competition, um, between the companies and actually obtaining a position in your, in your personal companies, but what do you see overall across the board? Yeah, I would say, um, it is competitive. For sure, like it's not, it's just not an easy route, but it's something where if you put in the hard work, like Ryan was saying, and if you really put yourself out there and you do the research, you, you will find a position and hard work will get rewarded. And to the point of it being challenging, I think that's something that you really should look for in a job because it's nice to have something at the end of the day where you like, I did a great job, you know, I accomplished all these things and you can really be proud of yourself um, in that environment. It's not so rewarding to have something that's maybe e not easy, but, but simple to do. And, and you're maybe not pushing yourself to all that you could achieve. So I, I would say, don't be afraid of, you know, challenging or competition. And also don't be afraid of 
failure or you know if you get turned down from this place and that place that's okay it was still a good learning experience going through that application process and there's plenty of companies out there like there's plenty of positions so don't get discouraged in either of those situations and just keep believing in yourself and working towards your goal. Um, yeah, I think the environment that we're in now where unemployment has gotten to where it's gotten because of the COVID crisis, this is a really challenging job market. The fortunate news about that is that we, for all the seniors that we're, we're talking to here, um, you've got four years for things to recover and for the job market to get a lot stronger. So. Um, it'll always be a competitive job market to, to work somewhere where um, the benefits are great and you have a group of people like ourselves um, that love what we do and are very passionate about it. So there's always going to be um, a lot of competition in, in jobs like that. Um, I think the biggest part, um, like Billy was saying, was just being um, authentically who you are, um, working hard, um, keeping your head down. I knew when I had my internship at Merrill the first time around, I knew that I knew absolutely nothing. And I wasn't there to try to fool anyone in suggesting that I did. Um, and I think a lot of my success was just that I kept my head down and I worked hard and I was willing to, to learn. Um, and that's something that now all these years later, um, I'm about to celebrate my 10 year anniversary on this second stint at Merrill. Um, and I still don't know everything and I still keep my head down and I still try to learn every day. Um, and so I, I think that's a big part um, of you know, your success, not only now and throughout college um, and then getting into the job market, but then thereafter. Um, touching on our first question about, um, is it about self-enrichment and, and, you know, developing wealth? Um, I've seen a lot of people in the competitive environment that I'm in try to come in with that objective of trying to earn as much money as possible. And that's why they were doing it. Um, I don't work with them anymore. Um, they just, they failed out for any number of reasons. And I think in the end of the day, you have to pick something that you truly believe in and you truly want to do and you care about doing and their success will come from that. So, um, in my very specific world, um, I can charge clients different ranges of fees. Um, and I find that advisors that charge the highest amount are figuring out how, what's the most that I can possibly make from this client aren't as successful as the people that are truly looking to help the people with what their issues are, right? So my clients in the end of the day are happy to pay what they pay, which is by the way, is on the low end of the scale um, because they know that I'm helping them achieve their goals and that's what's most important to me. And I'm happiest when I'm doing that and I don't even care about the, the financial component of it. Um, so it is competitive. Um, it is something that, you know, obviously you should want to work in competitive fields because they are in, enriching um, in many different ways, right? Personally fulfilling, I think is the biggest one. But um, yeah, I, I think just working hard, being competitive, being in a competitive space, you, you have to work hard um, and, and be goal oriented. So whatever the goal of the business is should be your goal as well. And, and if you can find something that matches and makes you happy, you're, you're in a great spot. Um, to Billy's point, um, and to Ryan's as well. Um, I think when you have the opportunity to, to get your foot in somewhere in an internship, it's both your opportunity to learn about that business and see if that's what you want to do, as much as it is you trying to get a foothold in that business and grow your career um, and your resume. So again, you want to be open-minded in these experiences. You want to work as hard as possible, but also realize that this may not be the final career that you pick, um, but it's just an opportunity um, to, to learn a little bit more. Yeah, I definitely agree with with a lot of that. Um, and I wanted to, you know, double click on what Joseph and Jeff have said about internships, definitely something to look into because they're very helpful to help you figure out what you like to do, what you don't like to do, what kind of culture you want to work in, on all these other, you know, aspects of professional life that you may not even have thought of um, during your, your career uh, in high school or even in college. Um, I will say for me, something that I discovered the hard way because me being first gen and having no idea about college systems, especially here in the United States, um, I went to college really focused on getting a good GPA, graduated with a great GPA, and I was homeless within 48 hours. Um, so I had to learn the hard way that nothing is guaranteed, um, that you definitely have to hustle. This is a very competitive environment. And once I started putting out, you know, my resume out there and sharing the things that I'm doing, it was still very, very difficult for me to land a job. And something that I realized at that time is that I was completely forgetting the people component. 
like definitely reach out to individuals, folks that you admire, folks that you see at a, at a company that you're interested in. Okay, I have no idea about you know technology, but I see that you're at Microsoft and you're an AE. What does that mean? What does an account executive mean? What what does sales look like? You know, in in healthcare, what does engineering look like in insurance? Like what the, what is that? I, I now have been getting a lot of. Uh, direct messages on LinkedIn and even emails from people in high school, folks in college. And I absolutely love it because I think that's a great way for you to connect with individuals that are already in certain positions, really get to know them, you know, have them get to know you, have, you know, be able to nurture that relationship. And then they can refer you internally, which also allows for you to get a, at a lot of times, you know, a higher chance of getting into that interview pipeline and securing something face to face and ultimately getting the job right. There's definitely, I would say for any great job, there's going to be a lot of competition, right? If it was super easy, everyone would land it and you most likely will not be fulfilled. But to Billy's point, yeah, work hard and you're going to really love it once you're in that position. And to Joseph's point, once you're there, no matter if you're five years in, two months in, 20 years in, keep your head down, get your stuff done and definitely continue showing, you know, results and be you, be you wherever you are. But as far as, you know, that path um, to landing a job, don't compare yourself with others. There's a lot of different reasons why some people get a job and some people don't. I know that in my school, get landing a job, especially if it was in finance or business consulting, it, it was like a, a great thing. So and then people would also get really down when they wouldn't land a job or have offers at the same rate as others. But don't compare um, yourself, I would say that. And lastly, as I've already mentioned, you know, do not forget the people component. There is no shame in cold calling, reaching out to other folks. If you do have a teacher who knows someone, having that person introduce you, it's totally okay if you have no real relationship, you know, with that other person, you know, definitely leverage whoever you do know, an advisor, a counselor, a pastor, a priest, whomever, who does have that connection to introduce you with other people so that you can learn more about those other opportunities and potentially Potentially have them refer you for the opportunity of your life. Wow. Uh, loving that answer and loving everyone's answer uh, so far. Uh, is it challenging? Yes, for sure. It's it's not an easy feat. Um, and if you just hear the names of, of what people are saying, right? Merrill Lynch, PwC, MetLife, Harvard University, like I can tell that everyone on this call is a hard worker because you don't get to those places by just saying like, hey, I'm Jeff and I'm cool. And just because I'm Jeff, I'm going to get the job, right? Like I can attest that each person, I'm, I'm just meeting them now, work hard, work hard to get to where they're at. Um, and I loved every point that everyone has said. Um, and so how do you overcome the fact that it's challenging and competitive? In my um, point of view, three things, right? Which people have a touch of food already. Dealing with rejection. Um, you are going to get rejected. People are going to tell you no. And like Billy said, it's okay. Let's move on to the next one. You got to keep moving forward because being rejected just means that you're one step closer to hitting that goal, hitting that dream, right? So it's totally okay if somebody tells you no. Two, taking action, right? So as Pamela was saying, LinkedIn is a social plat social networking platform for business professionals, right? So it's not Instagram. It's actually to do business. So everyone, for example, everyone here, has a LinkedIn profile. And if you go on LinkedIn and you look us up, you'll be able to find us. So how do you take action? Something that you can do, you can create a LinkedIn profile. You can reach out to Billy or Pamela or myself, say, hey, um, my name is X, Y, and Z, and this is what I'm trying to do. And I want to learn about what you're doing. And then that leads me to my third point of building your network. You know, same thing, but Pamela said about people, don't underestimate the power that having a friend could give you, right? Or a connection or someone that you don't know, someone who knows who, your aunt, your mom, whoever it is, someone knows somebody, um, right? So really leverage those things because it will help you get to the next level, right? I think of ourselves as an army of people and if you, you can't do it alone, you need people around you to help you succeed, right? So to kind of finish that off, to, to get over the comp that competitive and the challenging part, right? It's like, it's okay to be rejected. It's not the end of the world take action, actually do things to, to help yourself get to the next level. Um, and lastly, build your network, right? Start meeting people um, and, and you will see that success slowly starts to happen for yourself. 
Yeah, I think everyone is um, put it on a nail on the head uh, as far as explaining. Like in our industry as well, it's going to be competitive, but I also don't want that to deter you. Um, it's going to be competitive, but getting out there and experiencing it, I think is going to feel a little bit different than when you're looking at it from the outside. Um, so I guess from my side in this portion, um, maybe I could share a story. So when I was in high school, um, I was more of the C kind of guy. And maybe that's where my sales started coming. Cause when I talked with my parents, I'd convince them like I'm average, I'm getting my C's and that means I'm average. Um, that didn't work out as much once I went to college. I was fortunate enough to get a little scholarship where I needed to keep a 2.8. I got a 2.3 the first year and I was like, wow, what's going on? School is fun, but it shouldn't be that much fun. I should probably get a little bit more serious about this. So it was not until that second semester when I needed to push myself to get to the 3.3 to average out to the 2.8 that I realized that I could actually do school um, and I think there is lessons to be learned with pushing yourself. Um, I'll never be able to study for a test within a couple of hours like someone else might, but taking the, the extra amount of time, maybe the four hours to study for it and putting in the time will pay off down the road. I think it's those mental calluses that you build during that time that you can apply down the road um, once you have a job. Um, and I think just from that, I learned two big life lessons uh first of which was just with hard work you can get to where you want to uh, get to and then also just um yeah the thought process of being able to overcome adversity um finding ways more so i guess to be comfortable with being uncomfortable um, and you'll start you'll continue to feel that as you're getting into the work world because when you're first starting off in that first year or two it's very challenging you feel very uncomfortable because you all you've been doing is just studying textbooks and until you get out there, and that's why I think internships really help. Um, and I remember when I was first applying and looking for my first sales role, I didn't end up getting the sales position. Uh, and I was pretty bummed out about it. But when I spoke with one of my mentors, he made a comment saying, you now have a rabbit to chase. And that really stuck with me of, all right, I feel like I need to continue to chase for that next big thing. And then the appreciation once you actually get there and then you get whatever position you're trying to get, it's just that much more rewarding to say, I got shut down a couple of times, like Jeff was saying. And now after the third time, now I got to this position. Now I'm happy. Here I am. So those are my, my words of wisdom for you all. Thank you so much. Um, so we are definitely running over time, but this is a great conversation. That's a testament to like what everybody has to offer. Um, the last thing, and this will be, this is how we will end is if you, if nobody, we don't have to, not everybody has to speak. Sorry. I haven't like on my third cup of coffee. Um, uh, not everybody has to speak, but if you have, what would you tell to an aspiring student that wants to go into business? Not everybody has to answer, but what are some gems that you would drop for them, um, in this moment and also in this climate? I can start. I can say um, there's a lot of things you won't know. In fact, you don't even know what you don't know yet. Um, and so just being humble and understanding that, yes, you are worthwhile and you can have um, a certain self pride in yourself at any moment in your life. Um, you still need to be humble in applying for jobs in when you you'll get offers at some point when you get those offers, not thinking that you're better than any one particular job. Right. Like I think we all came from different places. Um, we're all in similar places now, um, but there's no real clear path ever to getting in one you know, particular career. So you don't know what you don't know yet. Be humble, be willing to learn. Um, life is always about learning the next thing. Um, so yeah, so, so just be humble and willing to, to learn and take opportunities um, as they arise. I can go next real quick, Hazel. Um, if you're watching this recording, please hit rewind and listen to what Joseph just said. <laughs> please, please. You don't know what you don't know. That's uh, that's my gem. Be a constant learner in life. Um, I'm 24 years old. When I'm 50 years old, I'm going to be learning um, because education is not necessarily an institution, it's a mindset. And if you go into with that mindset, people are going to want to help you and you are going to find that success. You know, so ba basically what Joseph said, like that was on the money. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll give a quick example to Joseph's point because it, it's so true. So when I first started at PwC, I was like, I can do this. You know, I, I, I got this. Give me the give me the problem. I'll get the answer and I'll just I'll figure it out. And it was really hard. And a lot of times I wasn't figuring it out. I wasn't getting the answer or it's taking me too long because I was afraid to ask the question. I was afraid to ask the question and, and show that I, I don't know the answer or I don't know what to do. And that's not the right way to, to approach it because yes, you're, you're your person and you have the pride to get the answer, but working at a company, it's a team. So there are people there that you can ask questions to that might know the answer and save you all that time. And that's how you learn is by asking the questions and thinking about things and, and bouncing ideas off others. So that was a, a really important thing that I had to learn is don't be afraid to ask questions. It's, it's not that anyone will think you're dumb or, or stupid or, or not paying attention. That's how you learn. That's how you learn is just ask questions. So now as a manager, I, I go to my new staff and I'm like, I want to know all questions, like just throw them at me. I don't care if you think it's dumb or whatever, like, because otherwise, how are you going to know? So ask questions. That's, that's my piece of advice. Yeah, just to build on that, the asking of questions, I've got a really cheesy recommendation for a, a book that I picked up when I first started off. Someone recommended it to me. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a cheesy title, but it's all about asking the right questions, learning your audience. Uh, I wish I'd picked it up earlier. I, st I have maybe three or four different versions of it, and I continue to read through them. One's about the digital age. Um, there's one that's older, that time before all the digital and social media and everything. But um, if, if you want to take that, maybe something good to leave off with. Yeah, I agree with all that. Definitely stay humble. If you don't stay humble, life will humble you real quick. So I'll say that. Um, and also, you know, stay curious and don't be afraid to challenge convention. You know, definitely remember that you, like it's already been said, you don't know what you don't know. There's a lot of things that you think you know that you, then you realize, oh yeah, I really don't know <laughs> those things. And, but once you get into your job and you finally are able to figure it out and start developing some mastery, don't be afraid to start challenging, hey, maybe we should do things in this way or that way. That's how I am in my role, literally by just recommending different ways to be more efficient um, or just doing things. Innovation, especially right now in the age that we're living in, is becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger um, job area and there's a lot of opportunities for people who are very curious and who are not scared to experiment and break things and learn from it and fail up and continue just you know growing in that way and also even if you don't get the job of your dreams remember you can still be an entrepreneur go ahead and create your own thing there's so many individuals right now who are category builders who are influencers who are building careers off of youtube content like you name it so if you don't get you know, the, the job of your dreams and in business, as you thought, don't be afraid to also go in business, <laughs> go into business with your idea, partner up with a few buds or other people who are like-minded entrepreneurs and create your own thing. Thank you guys so much. This was amazing. Um, so this concludes the end of our session. Um, I just want to, again, say thank you so much. Um, I feel like this will, I hear a lot of students saying that they wanna go into business. So I feel like everything that was said has hit every question that I've received about business and just, and also like influencing the mentality about business. Um, so I feel like this is just gonna help a lot. So thank you again. Um, if Alyssa, if you have anything else you would like to say, this, you guys can start hopping off um, and this will be the end. No, just thank you. This, I mean, you guys were, this was my favorite session, I think of the day, like, it doesn't matter, even if our kids that are listening to this aren't going into business, like all the stuff you guys said is applicable in every work field, the stuff that you guys were saying about staying humble, working hard, all of that. Um, we're going to call this talk the, the gem drop or something mm -hmm. like that. But thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.